Four things you should never share with others, friends. Hey there. We're continuing our series of videos on interesting topics, and today's subject is a real doozy. What kind of stuff should you keep under wraps? Y'all know that every person has a light and a dark side, right? And you never know when that darker part might rear its ugly head in your relationships and interactions with friends, partners, or whoever. So there's a whole category of things that are better left unsaid, period. First up, never ever talk about your aches and pains. There's this ancient tale that really drives the point home. Once upon a time, there was this old guy named EZ, whose son went off to the army and left him in charge of the family farm. EZ busted his butt taking care of the animals, tending the fields, the whole nine yards. One day, a neighbor stops by and asks, EZ, how's it hanging? Without missing a beat, EZ says, You know, my back is just killing me. Well, word spreads through the village that old Easy is on his last legs and too feeble to run the farm anymore. Folks start showing up, offering him pennies on the dollar to buy the place off him. Come on, Easy, they say. You're an old codger. Just take the money and be done with it. But Easy ain't having none of that nonsense. Then his son comes home from the army and is stoked to see the farm in tip-top shape. He thanks his pops and asks, Pops? Give me the most important wisdom you've learned in your long life. Easy lays this on him. If something's ailing you, keep your trap shut. Otherwise, first they'll just pity you, then they'll kick you while you're down. So listen up, my friends. If you got a bum knee or whatnot, zip those lips tight. That leads us to the second wise saying, don't tell a friend anything you wouldn't tell an enemy. Life's always changing, you know? Sometimes even your closest buddies get jealous when you're killing it. Imagine you and your pal were on the same level, same struggles and all, then bam! You start raking in the dough, got a hot spouse, nice crib, the works, while they're still stuck in a rut. Who's to say they won't get bitter and resentful over your success? I bet some of y'all have stories about a friend of 20 years going behind your back, spilling your secrets out of spite after you leveled up in life. The moral is, keep your cards close to your chest. What they don't know can't hurt you. Third gem of wisdom. Never speak ill of yourself. Check out this tale about a desert dweller who spent decades digging in the same spot, hoping to strike water one day. Day after day, year after year, he toiled away with his shovel. Finally, after eons of backbreaking work, a crystal clear oasis sprang forth from the ground. Folks from neighboring towns came running, gawking at the old timer's feet. You're a real marvel, Pops, they hollered. But get this. Every time the humble dude was praised, he'd clam up and dismiss it with, Aw, shucks, it was nothing. God helped me out is all. Or, if it weren't for my family, I couldn't have done it. He downplayed his hard labor so much that people started treating the oasis like a mud puddle, bathing their feet in it and what have you. The moral? Don't sell yourself short. Recognize your accomplishments because if you don't value your own efforts, why should anyone else? Fourth, and finally, cut out the belly aching, will ya? Sure, there's a whole lot of nonsense to whine about in this world and griping as easy as pie. You stub your toe and suddenly it's everyone else's fault. The governments, your spouses, your parents, the moons. But that kind of negativity is like a black hole just sucking you in deeper. Check it. There was this guy out for a stroll who saw an old couple on their porch with a pooch lying between them whimpering away. Dude figured it was none of his business and kept walking. Same thing the next day and the next. Finally, on day three, he works up the nerve to ask, Hey there, what's wrong with your pupper? The little old lady looks him dead in the eye and says, He's lying on a nail. The guy's baffled, like, Well, if he's in pain, why don't he just move? Her response, I reckon he's hurting enough to whimper, but not enough to get off his darn backside. See what I'm getting at here? We moan and groan, but life ain't so bad that we can't make a change. If your health is crummy, stop your quetching and do something. Hit the gym, eat better, pop some vitamins. If you're broke, well, crying into your beer at the same dead-end job sure ain't gonna fix it. Get a side hustle or change careers altogether. The point is, friends, enough with the pity party. Stop draining your energy on negativity and start taking action. That's real talk. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more thought-provoking topics coming your way. What bad habits do y'all have when it comes to oversharing? Maybe you can't stop venting or spilling the beans on your personal biz? Let me know in the comments. Real life stories are solid gold. 
Hit that bell too so you don't miss out on new vids dropping. Catch y'all on the flip side. You know, now that I think about it, there's one more biggie I gotta mention when it comes to stuff you shouldn't put out there. We've all had those moments where we get so down on ourselves, start running our own mouth about how we ain't worth a darn. But doing that is like planting bad seeds that'll keep growing into a gnarly weed of self-doubt and low self-esteem. I'm reminded of this story about a farmer who just could not for the life of him get his crops to take. Every season, he'd till the soil, sow the seeds, and tend to them real diligent-like, but nada. The harvests were totally dismal year after year. Well, one day this traveling guru happened to pass through those parts and couldn't help but notice the farmer's struggled fields. He strolled right up and asked, Good sir, what's the matter here? Why do your crops fail so miserably every time? And you'll never guess the farmer's response. He let out a deep sigh and said, You know what? I'm just a no-good failure of a farmer. Ain't got a green thumb in my body. I should just pack it in. Can you believe that? After all his hard work and perseverance, he was his own worst enemy with that kind of toxic self-talk. Well, thankfully, the wise guru was there to shake some sense into him. He said, Hold up there, friend. The seeds you've been planting aren't the issue. It's the negative seeds you've been planting in your mind about yourself that have been stunting your growth. From then on, the farmer changed his tune. Instead of talking down to himself, he gave himself props for his diligence and stopped getting discouraged after every setback. Lo and behold, his crops started flourishing like never before. The man truly reaped what he sowed once he cut out the self-sabotaging mindset. So let that be a lesson to us all. If you keep feeding yourself a steady diet of insults and putting yourself down, you'll stay trapped in that toxic cycle. Whereas speaking life and affirmation over yourself, despite the struggles, is like unlocking a reserves of willpower you didn't know you had. It's a muscle we all gotta exercise. Self-love and self-acceptance. Start focusing on your wins, no matter how small, and you'll soon start racking up more W's. Whew, sorry to go so deep on y'all there but it's real important stuff we all need to keep in mind. At the end of the day, if you're only as good as how you talk about and see yourself, doesn't it make sense to be your own hype man or woman? To speak positive things into existence for yourself? I know it's not always easy, but it's a habit we all gotta reinforce. All right, fam, I'll hop off my soapbox now, but let me know if any of this rings true for you in the comments. We're all in the same boat trying to stay afloat with our self-esteem, so let's keep uplifting each other. Don't be stingy with the deets either. We can all learn from each other's experiences. And if you dug what I laid down here, show the love by smashing that subscribe button to keep getting these real talk uploads. Let's build this community of positivity together. One more thing I want to touch on here that's crucial. Guarding your heart and mind from toxic negativity, whether it's coming from others or from your own inner critic. We all got that nagging voice inside that likes to rain on our parade sometimes, don't we? Feeding into that junk will straight up pollute your outlook on life. I'm reminded of this old Buddhist parable about two wolves that live inside us all. One wolf represents negativity, greed, hatred, self-doubt, you name it. The other stands for positivity, peace, love, humility, perseverance. The two wolves are constantly battling it out, and the one that grows strongest and wins out is the one you feed and nurture the most. Deep stuff, right? The point is, we all got some degree of both light and darkness warring within us, but we get to choose which side we're going to empower with our thoughts and actions each day. You can either be your own personal hype squad or your most relentless hater. The negative self-talk loop is oh so easy to get stuck in, but it's like poisoning your own well of potential. Whenever I catch myself slipping into that toxic mindset, I try to course correct by giving myself a mental reset. I'll spend a few minutes visualizing my goals and aspirations, speaking affirmations over myself about who I want to become. It's cheesy, but fake it till you make it really works. Before you know it, you've tricked your brain into adopting a more positive inner dialogue. From there, I try to be intentional about consuming content and surrounding myself with influences that will nourish my mindset rather than dragging it down into the muck. Uplifting podcasts, books, even just unfollowing social media accounts that low-key make me feel crummy about myself. You become what you feed your mind, for real. At the end of the day, 
We all got to be self-aware about what we're allowing to take root in our hearts. Pruning out the negativity is a constant process of vigilance. But putting in that work pays such dividends in your overall peace of mind and well-being. It's the ultimate form of self-care, if you ask me. I don't know about y'all, but this is something I have to be intentional about every single day. Some days the negative wolf is barking way louder than I'd like. But whenever I find myself slipping, I try to circle back to surrounding myself with positivity again through affirmations, upbeat media, or even just going for a walk to reset. Gotta keep feeing that positive wolf, you know? This is a lifelong journey of mindset work for all of us, but taking those proactive steps to guard your headspace from negativity makes all the difference. Start paying attention to what you're consuming and who you're allowing to speak into your life. You'll be amazed at how powerfully it impacts your outlook when you take control of what you're feeing. I could seriously go on and on about this topic, but I'll wrap it up there for now. Let me know if any of this hits home or if you have any insights to share from your own experiences. We're all in this together, so let's keep dishing out the real talk and holding each other accountable to sticking to a positive mindset. Don't be strangers either. Drop a comment, introduce yourselves. Let's keep building up this community of like-minded folks trying to spread more light. Appreciate y'all for real. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more thought-provoking topics coming your way. What bad habits do y'all have when it comes to oversharing? Maybe you can't stop venting or spilling the beans on your personal biz. Let me know in the comments. Real-life stories are solid gold. Hit that bell, too, so you don't miss out on new vids dropping. Catch y'all on the flip side.